So welcome back everyone, Mike here. I just got home from work a few minutes ago and it is a hot one here in Western Pennsylvania. It's about 90 degrees, something like that. It's a real steamer. But anyway, this evening we're gonna do a little bit of mowing and then we're gonna talk about 10 things to consider when purchasing a commercial mower. Now keep in mind this video is kind of designed for the landowner and the homeowner, uh, not so much the commercial guys. I think they pretty much know what they need. But anyway, we're gonna get started here and then we will go over the 10 things to consider when buying a commercial mower. This evening we're going to be running both of these mowers. That is a Walker MH37i. It's got a 37 horsepower fuel injected engine, 64 inch rear discharge deck. And we'll also be running the Toro 6000 series. It has the Turbo Force 60 inch deck with the MyRide suspension. Both very good mowers. They both do the same thing, but they're actually a little bit different from one another. Now before we get started, I'm going to give you the first thing to consider when purchasing a commercial mower. You need to ask yourself, you know, how much time do you spend each week cutting your grass, especially in peak season, you know, early spring, you're getting lots of rain, it's growing like crazy. Ask yourself how much time you're spending cutting that lawn and are you okay with that? If you are, you know, you could probably just click like right now and move on to another video, but for everybody else, stick around.
well it's still hot but that didn't take long at all now if you remember at the beginning of this video we talked about you know ask yourself how much time do you spend each week cutting your grass especially in peak season when it's really growing once you you know have that figured out ask yourself are you okay with that you know do you have the time available to do that each and every week and if you're okay with that that's fine just keep doing what you're doing but if you're not okay with that you're probably still watching and you're considering buying a commercial mower so the second thing obviously is to consider is how big is your lawn you know because that's going to determine what size mower you get uh, how big of a deck you get things like that and how much time you can save by going you know with a commercial mower that would be the second thing to consider is uh, how big is your lawn now the third thing to consider I think would be you know do you have a really nice manicured lawn with really nice grass or is it kind of like mine with lots of weeds kind of rough uh, because what you're going to want to do you know if you have a really nice lawn it's nice and smooth you're probably not going to need something with a real good suspension you really need less horsepower to cut nice grass than you do weeds so that's something to think about you know is your lawn really nice or is it kind of like mine lots of weeds lots of bumps and things like that so that would be the third thing to consider you know what you're actually going to be cutting manicured versus kind of rough that would be number three number four how steep is your property do you have lots of hills do you have hillsides and banks that you have to mow uh, because generally speaking zero turns aren't the best on hills you know they kind of want to slide off of them now some are better than others you know you can go with different tire options some people put weights on them things like that but like I said generally speaking zero turn mowers aren't the best on hillsides so that's something else to consider number five trees do you have a lot of trees on your property like we do uh, that's something you really want to think about you know trees are an obstacle for one but most uh, commercial if not all zero turn mowers work really good getting close to trees you can zip right around them that's less you have to run the string trimmer but something else to think about are the limbs you know the walker does not have a roll bar on it uh, probably because it has a little lower center of gravity uh, so around here the walker works a little bit better around the trees the Toro I actually knocked the camera off the top of it you know you don't want to be mowing along at 12 miles an hour or whatever these are both really fast mowers and catch a limb with that rops so that's something else to think about if you have trees on your property you probably want something with a lower center of gravity uh, without a rops on it and the other thing is dealing with leaves in the fall and then you can kind of get into side discharge or rear discharge uh, you know a, a vac all sorts of things like that so you want to think about the leaves this area here behind me we get a ton of leaves and uh, I mean I've tried mulching them up before just with the side discharge I mean they'll get to the point where you're pushing them with the deck on the mower and they're coming over the top so that's where you need a big backpack blower or some other method to get rid of them but if you don't have a whole lot of trees you know something with a rear discharge uh, like that walker and when I say rear discharge there's hardly anything that comes out of the back it mulches it up so well uh, you may want to consider something like that or the side discharge works well you just have to keep blowing them one direction so that's something important uh, think about the trees that was number five number six do you have areas on your lawn that you know stay wet almost all summer long uh, because a lot of zero turns you know they're not great in the mud uh, things like that like I said before you can get different tire options uh, but that's something to think about you have areas that stay wet all the time that will kind of help decide on uh, what mower you're going to buy number seven rear discharge versus side discharge now this is something you really want to think about now for me personally I always liked a side discharge mower you know different sections of our lawn I'll kind of start in the middle maybe just run big circles blow everything to the outside into the tree line you know the little sticks the grass clippings all the debris leaves all that stuff is gone that's why I thought I I would always stick with a side discharge that was until I started running the walker mower which is a rear discharge and I wouldn't even really call it a rear discharge because there's really nothing that comes out it just mulches everything up so well uh, there's really not much comes out of the back of the deck at all uh, so you know if you have a driveway here and a sidewalk here and mulch beds over here you may want to consider a rear discharge mower so you're not blowing that stuff all over the place something to think about but everything that we talk about it's going to be kind of specific to your own property there's not one property that's the same so uh, that's something else to think about rear discharge versus side discharge 
Number eight, comfort. How important is that to you? You know, that kind of goes back to your really nice manicured lawn that's super smooth. If you have something like that, you probably don't really need a zero turn, you know, with a real good suspension on it. If you have a lawn like me, you're getting up there in years. I mean, I'm not old, but I am 52 years old. And, you know, if you're mowing for three or four hours straight, you kind of get banged up a little bit. So you need to ask yourself how important comfort is to you in a nice ride. Uh, between the Toro and the Walker, the Toro is more comfortable, has a nicer seat, and it's got the MyRide suspension. So if that's something that's really important to you, you know, you may want to look for something with a nice suspension. Number nine, deck size. You know, a lot of people think the bigger the deck, the better it is. You know, more power, more horsepower, you'll get done quicker. But that's not always the case. If you have a lot of obstacles to work around, you know, if your lawn kind of dips and turns and goes up and down, you got to worry about scalping and things like that. Uh, so that's something else you want to think about. You know, if you've got trees that are close together, you don't want to have to run a string trimmer in between them where you could run a 60 inch deck versus a 72 inch through there. So that's something else you really want to put a lot of thought into is how big of a deck you want. And remember, the bigger the deck, the more horsepower, the more it's going to cost. That's number nine. All right, luckily we're on number 10 because Hunter's out here now and he's putting some serious pressure on me to go, yeah, you know where. But anyway, number 10 is dealer support and service. You know, you're going to have to do some research, see who the dealers are in your area, what brands they sell, talk to people, see what their experience is like with them, and uh, go from there. You know, like I said earlier, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, Fletcher's Outdoor Power Equipment uh, in Delmont, PA. Rob, that's where these two mowers came from. And by the way, next week, I think we're going to swap out for something else. Rob is very, very knowledgeable on all things commercial mowers. But uh, yeah, and that was number 10, dealer support and service. But bottom line is this, there's a lot of good equipment out there. There really is. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of junk out there anymore. They wouldn't be in business if there is. But everybody's piece of property is different. So, uh, you know, demo as many different units as you can. Get a good feel for them. But take everything into consideration. Because when you buy something like this, you know, this isn't like a throwaway riding mower that's going to last you, you know, two years or something like that. You're going to have this for a very long time. So, uh, you know, really think it through. Find a good dealer. Take all those things we talked about into consideration and go from there. But anyway, I think that's about it. What do you think, Hunter? Are we going to wrap this up? He's pointing. He's ready. Yeah, we are. But anyway, like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Thanks.